Hello and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast and welcome to this special series of Weekend Essay Podcasts. Join us as we delve into the personal narratives of our editorial team, exploring the intersection of life experiences and financial advice. From triumphs to setbacks, each episode offers a candid glimpse into the journeys that shape our perspectives on money management. Get ready to uncover the human side of finance as we share our stories, insights, and lessons learned along the way. Welcome to the Weekend Essays on the Money Marketing Podcast. Next month, my long-term girlfriend and I are finally tying the knot. No, please, save your congratulations. Although a donation to our honeymoon would be nice. It's really not that seismic. We've been together now for nearly eight years, seven of those under the same roof. We have a settled routine and reasonably settled lives. We own our own flat and split all our bills. We even have an 11-month-old child. So, at the risk of sounding unromantic, our upcoming wedding almost feels like an afterthought. It's also wildly out of context, an eruption of old-fashioned passion into the lives of a thoroughly domesticated couple. Fifty years ago, our order of doing things, moving in together, having a child, getting married, would have been rather unusual, even taboo. We have not been spared the odd roll of the eyeballs from our loved ones, along with comments of the what took you so long variety. However, our approach, once so novel, is starting to look like the norm. And that's not because couples today, unlike us, are more disorganised. It's because the cost of getting married is increasingly beyond their means. A recent survey by the Financial Mutual One family confirmed this. It revealed that of those who are not married, two in five, 38%, who would like a wedding are concerned about affordability, with most under 40s expecting one to cost around £16,000. This means that getting married, once a top priority for young couples, has now plummeted down the list. The same survey showed that just one in 10, 12%, see it as a top three life goal, well below living comfortably, 54%, travelling, 36%, and buying a house, 28%. Of course, It's all part of a familiar narrative. One family estimates that the average cost of getting married, buying a property and having children has reached nearly £400,000, an increase of 35000 in just two years. Given these numbers, it's hardly surprising that couples are opting to rule out one of the three, with marriage drawing the short straw. A typical example is Katie Oliphant, a 26-year-old HR coordinator who rents a property in Cambridge with her partner Cormac. The couple want to get married and get on the property ladder, but are finding it unrealistic to do both. In an ideal world, says Katie, we'd get married soon, but wedding costs are absolutely extortionate, and because of the cost of living crisis, everything has increased. She continues, I just don't know where we'd get the money for a wedding right now. I think buying a house is more important because if we were to have children, then at least we'd have a roof over our heads. At first, we wanted to buy when we moved in together but we then realise how long it takes, especially as, at the moment, we want to live in the city centre. So, we decided not to rush it. As someone who lives in central London, which, as you may have heard, is not cheap, I can sympathise with Katie's dilemma. I'm sure one of the reasons we delay getting hitched is because the day-to-day struggle got in the way. Juggling priorities and budgets has absorbed both money and time. Eight years have passed in a flash. And we're not immune to cost pressures when it comes to our wedding either. The last few months have been dominated by spreadsheets, with my partner and I poring over items and haggling over details. How many flowers do we want? How long do we need a photographer for? Are cakes really that expensive? The price of a full fat wedding was enough to persuade us that an intimate gathering of immediate family would suit us just fine. The money saved on pointless ephemera. Chocolate fountains, anyone? is instead going towards a big summer party, to which all friends and family are invited. Of course, it helps that I'm now in my mid-forties and more financially secure than many others embarking on a marriage. But even with our financial discipline, we will still be counting the pennies for a long time to come. And if, God forbid, we ever got divorced, well, it turns out that's not too cheap either. However, all such thoughts will be far from my mind come next month. Amid the flowers and the cakes and the confetti, I will be marrying the woman I love in the presence of the people I love. Costs be damned. There are some things you can't put a price on. 
Thank you for joining us on this episode of our weekend essay series. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as our print edition, Money Marketing Magazine. So make sure to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Threads. See you next time.